Hi, I'm Teresa Frosini. And I'm Kyle Noonan, and this is Local Fair. It's no secret that Dallas-Fort Worth has more restaurants per capita than any other city in the U.S. We have it all, from the hip foodie scene to the small mom and pop cafe. But with so many options, how do you choose? Well, that's where we come in. We invite three everyday diners to suggest their favorite restaurant, then let you in on the conversation as the other two talk about their experience. You're absolutely right. We don't use professional restaurant critics here. We use real people with real opinions. We've got plenty of options to whet your appetite, so let's see what's cooking this week right here on Local Fair. As always, we're here at Bowl and Barrel. Whether you bowl a frame or two on our state-of-the-art bowling lanes or just enjoy a selection of our house-made specialties, this is a dining experience that's sure to be right up your alley. And it's the perfect place for our guest reviewers to talk about this week's restaurants. Here's Teresa with this week's guest reviewers. Okay, so this week we brought in three people from the DFW area who suggested their favorite restaurant for the others to go visit, come back here, and tell us what they think. Our guests this week are Karen Taylor, who's an employee wellness manager from Dallas and suggested Mia's Tex-Mex. Pat Green, a singer-songwriter from Fort Worth, who suggested Pacific Table. And Penny Wilson is in sales, lives in the colony, and wanted the group to try Rodeo Goat. All right, so we'll start off this week with a place that's been a Dallas institution since 1981, where they combine original family recipes with a distinctive interior style to create some of the highest quality Tex-Mex in the DFW area. My name is Mia Enriquez. I'm the owner and operator of Mia's Tex-Mex at 4322 Lemon Avenue, Dallas, Texas. Mia's is fresh quality food, great drinks, great atmosphere. It's like coming into our dining room and having a great meal with family and friends. I have all walks of life that come in here. Every now and then you'll catch a local celebrity. The restaurant started in 1981 in a little hole in the wall of the street. My parents grew up in the Dallas area, and I believe that they played a major part in bringing Tex-Mex to Dallas. This was a dream. They worked hard to achieve it, and they leave behind a legacy, and it's a humbling experience to be able to carry that on for them. It's an honor for me and my family to be able to do that. All right, let's talk some Tex-Mex. Mia's is one of your favorites. Absolutely, Mia's has been around for years and if you haven't been there and you live in Dallas, typically it just takes a friend to invite you and you go try it out and you're hooked. Okay. Um, it's definitely the place that when we haven't lived in the Dallas area that we crave for our Tex-Mex fix okay. and the first place we think of when we're ready for some good Mexican food. Nice, how often do you, do you go there, would you say? Um, well, I try not to go too often because it's <laughs> definitely rich. <laughs> but it's definitely probably something that we venture out to at least a couple of times um, a year, so it's delicious. Do yeah. you have a favorite on the menu? or well, anything with the brisket is fabulous. Brisket tacos. Oh, I heard the brisket, oh, heard the brisket tacos were oh. awesome. I didn't yeah. know that though. I feel like it's kind of where brisket tacos started and then everybody else tried to reproduce them and they're good other places, but this is the place where it got started yes. and it's delicious. Been the best. Now, Absolutely. had you had brisket tacos someplace else before? I've had brisket tacos everywhere that has brisket tacos. <laughs> so what? what's your take on Mia's brisket tacos? I, I didn't have their tacos. I had their enchiladas. Oh. Okay. I had to be a little different, and uh, they were really good. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm telling you, what well, the best thing was the queso chorizo. It was. Mm -hmm. Have you had that? I have. Had they it. do it's it really table good. side, and she comes out, and it's like a taffy pool with cheese and chorizo. A and taffy pool. And and cheese. Cheese. It really is. So I was going, cool "What looking. are you doing?" And she puts it in these hot tortillas, and then cuts them. And we. Well, there were four of us, and you end up with six servings, and we were fighting over the last two. And, and that's like an appetizer. And since it was my restaurant, I got one of them. So, so you, yeah. I <laughs> back it, off, I girls. It's it. mine. I love it. So, what else did you have? Um, I had the margarita, which was really good. And Tex-Mex, it's all about the chips and salsa. Rocks, salt, uh, are frozen? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. On the rocks with salt. There yeah. Uh -huh. really and good. There you go. Uh, he approves. <laughs> chips and, the chips and salsa, because Tex-Mex, that's what it's all about. And I don't care how good the food is. If your chips and salsa aren't good, I'm not coming back, probably. So, gotcha. And they were good. They were fresh. The salsa had a little bite to it. So nice. it was good. Nice. And when you went, you said you, you had the chorizo dip as well. I did, but I'm a fajita guy, and so I'm really critical. Like, if you go, there's, I don't want to sit here and name other restaurants, but the certain marinades match, it, sure. and, you know, the, the meat. And, and I, I thought that it was very savory, which is very important to me. Good. And, and still had plenty of fat in there to make it taste 
not dry. Juicy. Yeah, juicy. Yeah. <laughs> juicy. Mm -hmm. Juicy. I love it. Yeah. How about any desserts? Did anybody try desserts? Well, the is. No. So, so is great. Yeah, I also think you always have to pick up a praline to go when you split with the mm -hmm. table because it's really sweet, but it's just enough where you get that sweet tooth fix and they're fabulous. So, nice. yeah. Nice. <laughs> Tell me about the sopapillas. Sopapillas were good. They were fresh, they were homemade. They came out popping hot and yeah, they were yummy. What's the atmosphere like here? Is this a casual place? Is this a date place? Is it? It's it was really both actually. I feel like you can go with your family, you can go with your friends and have a few margaritas and have a good time or you mm -hmm. could go on a date, but it's definitely a family atmosphere because it has been there four years and really it's um, the one and only Mia's. Well, so. we went, there was a table, we went on a Tuesday. I wasn't expecting it to be near as crowded as it was. Mm -hmm. And they set at this table of guys that came in right next to us and Obviously, they were regular. It, well, I wasn't going to name drop, but um, no. And the little waitress came out, and they all knew her name, and she knew all. And there were six of them, and she knew all of their names, and they were just hugging. And I was like, oh, I like, I love hugs. So Aww. I was all about it then. So it, it has a great atmosphere. Yes, feeling girl, in it. Uh, <laughs> you didn't get any hugs. Didn't get any hugging. Well, you have to go back then for the hugs. That's oh, you know, what you order for sure. Let's rate this one on a scale from one to five. I know you chose it. So yes. how would you rank this? It's absolutely a five for me because it is. Is the best Tex-Mex in Dallas in my opinion and it is that family atmosphere that's been there for years and that everyone loves Perfect. so it's fabulous food all right how about for you Pat I'm I, dude, I'm four and a half on, right. on just about anything that comes with a margarita like that <laughs> 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 that's it I love it I love it it was a solid four all right it was solid a solid four, four. Perfect. Mm -hmm. would you go back again if I were in that area most definitely gotcha okay all so. right great recommendation and I know you feel strongly about it for oh, sure. thank you for recommending it to absolutely. us absolutely when we come back we'll visit a place that focuses on great food as well as the environment stay with us people right now are really intrigued by that and are really following that whole that whole theme If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back to Local Fair, where we take three regular DFW restaurant goers, have them suggest their favorite restaurant, have the other two go for a visit, and then they all come back here and tell us what they think. Pat Green says, Pacific Table's concept and commitment to sustainability really adds to the dining options in Fort Worth. Hello everyone, my name is Felipe Armenta and I'm the chef owner of Pacific Table, 1600 South University Drive. Pacific Table is a California feel restaurant with a lot of handcrafted food, a lot of organic, a lot of fresh produce, more of a healthy vibe a restaurant with food that actually makes you feel good. Everything from scallops, oysters, uh, even chicken. We have two steaks on the menu. So it's a wide variety, but we're more seafood driven. It really caters to all types of different clientele. Not only can you get dressed up and have a really amazing meal or a birthday or an anniversary, but you can come here at lunch and still enjoy it and not have to feel like you do have to get dressed up. We try to really focus on, on superfoods, so everything from quinoa to kale to organic to free range. And, and I think, you know, you leave here, you feel good about yourself. And I think that's what we're really trying to focus. Good energy, good food, light and vibrant. All right, Pat Green. Let's talk. Put your me rest. on the spot. Let's let's talk serious. All Tell right. me about Pacific Table, right? Okay. This um, is one of your favorites. It's totally my favorite. Um, or, or, right, my, it's my new favorite. That's what okay. I should say. Because you know, you go through times in life where you know you're excited about something because of the new, have right? Mm -hmm. So uh, my office, we got a new office. Me and a bunch of guys, and it's right around the corner from this place. Um, it's you know, it's kind of over by uh, Blue Mesa there in University Park Village near Colonial and it's which is you know kind of ground zero for us and uh, nice. stumbled in there one day with my wife and um, just loved it. I, I like a restaurant that has a I don't know just a, a, a if the word olfactory is a, is a word it I is. love a great <laughs> smell I love the way that place smells it doesn't part. smell fishy you know it's right. a fish it's a, it's a fish, fish taste place. that okay. doesn't smell fishy right. and that was important yeah. to me um, it has a great look clean lines. So when you first walked in what did you think? 
um, that the Cowboys were about to blow the game, but that's neither here nor there. Um, no, I liked it because it's very airy. Um, it just had, and you're right, it had a great mm -hmm. smell, it wasn't fishy. Mm -hmm. Weight staff was, I mean, they were all friendly and, and I liked that. And so I immediately started asking about what was their favorite things on the menu and they were all willing to just throw out several different things and they just changed the menu the night okay, before. Yeah, they had for me as well. Yeah, yeah. Really? So they actually recommended the filet for me, which was a little surprising really? because it was more right. of a fish restaurant, but the waiter said that's what I should go with and I did and it was actually really tender and fabulous. So Yum. yeah, it was really good. What did you have along with that? I actually had the mashed potatoes as the side and mm -hmm. I did get a taste of my mother-in-law's uh, quinoa salad, which was fabulous. Oh, nice. Yeah, and that's sometimes something hard to get that's really good. That's exactly right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had yeah. a really like citrusy flavor with yeah, some avocado it can, it can be in it. bitter if you're not careful. Yeah, yeah. it was really, really good. Yum. Yeah. Now, do you have a staple piece that you like to eat there? Or do you always do. go fish, or do you? No, I, I go. I, I dance around, but what I always have to have <laughs> is the is the two the same appetizer. I get the artichokes and the fried oysters. No, no, oh. no, no, the new oh. one, the Pacific dip oh, was okay. to die you for. Have to you have to change it now. Just, yeah, now. Okay, I'll go there I, tomorrow. I, 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 I might go with you. All right, come so on down. Good. But. It's um, smoked. One of the smoked fish and some cream cheese and onions, and it comes out in this scoop. And then they were calling it guacamole, but it's not. It's diced avocado and onions and the seasoning mm, so with this good. wonderful sourdough grilled bread. Yeah, that, all of those ingredients and, just sound horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I would never eat that. And, Wrap it up with some bread. <laughs> no. They asked us if we wanted to lick the plate because we were like, oh, yeah, oh, scraping it with the fork. It was so good. What's on the fried oysters that makes them taste it's so good? Like it's a certain a, it's sauce. It's like a citrusy pest, uh, pesto. Yeah, it's really good. It's, I'm it's, not an oyster person, and so not, I had to be I'm convinced. I'm not really either, yeah. but I was so surprised when yeah. I got it. I was like, I love that. It was really Really good. And, and I we get that little aioli either, on the side. It was side. good. Yeah. So it's it kind of like a triple decadency. Yeah. yeah it's, it was really good. Um, and then on, for my entree, I always kind of I get dance between the uh, between the trout, mm -hmm. uh, the the pecan crusted trout, and the um, ahi tuna salad, I love which is really yeah. good. That's great. That's great. How about desserts? Anybody do desserts that? The dessert. Oh, I think, so I think Penny did a dessert. <laughs> well, their, their we, assistant, we got her. <laughs> their assistant manager is a pastry chef, oh, so yeah. she is all about good desserts. Nice. And so they're all homemade, and they bring out this coconut cream pie that you I can that. you that can immediately cool. tell that oh, it's cool. homemade because it's not the all perfect looks, you know. <laughs> and it's but it's really you know some cream pies can be really heavy and. It was kind of like an oily, a lot of them Yeah, do. some of them, no, like this coconut was good. oil can get, can get right. in the cream. But then we had to do the red velvet cake. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you, it was, I couldn't decide. But the funniest thing is, there was a guy at the table right next to us, and he got a coconut cream pie the same time we did. It came out. Mm -hmm. And before the four of us were finished with them, he had ordered a second coconut yeah. cream oh, pie. wow. And they're pretty so, good servings, too. Yeah, yeah they are. they can share with the table. Wow. They're really good. All right, so, let's, let's rate this one. Now, you, I know you're excited about this, right? <laughs> just serve okay, the appetizer. <laughs> one to five. How would you rate this? Um, I would give it a four, and only because they were out of two of the fish when we went. So, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so I think if I go back and, they, and we can try those, it would it could go up to a five easily. All right. All right. How about for you, Kim? I would give it a four as well. The food would tasted great. They were out of one thing on the menu, but definitely would love to go back and try what they were out of, which was the braised short rib. Okay. And I think it's just because they just changed the menu. Service was great. I food was it. good. Gotcha. I think it has a lot of potential yeah. where it's going to be one of those main, uh, mainstays in Fort Worth. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. All right, Pat, I know you love it. What, what, uh, what? I, I, I'm, but I'm the same. I am a four with a five in the wings. Okay. Because Fair. I just believe that really great sure. restaurants don't start out great. truly great. They, they get there. They and this place has a lot of potential. Excellent. All right, great. Thanks, Pat. When we come back, we'll visit a place whose high ratings don't compare to its high quality taste. Staying creative, uh, developing different sauces, different proteins, uh, bringing in fresh local veg. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. Welcome back. Our last restaurant was suggested by Penny Wilson, who says Rodeo Goat is a Fort Worth rookie that's more than capable of beefy brilliance. Let me 
executive chef Keith Grover of Rodeo Goat Ice House, located at 2836 Curry Street in West 7th Fort Worth. We deal with uh, craft hamburgers. That means a full menu of 15 different choices that we built with different themes, flavor profiles, seasonal flavors. We also have a cool program called the Burger Battle. We bring those in to kind of keep it innovative and really kind of just driving our menu to stay fresh and exciting for the customer. On top of that, you know, we really try to connect the menu with our craft beer. Everyone enjoys the burgers, but we have the best selection of craft beers in West 7th Fort Worth, period. The atmosphere at Rodeo Goat is comfortable, fun, very inviting. Whether you're coming in for lunch, dinner, if you're on a date with someone, whether you're coming in with your family, you won't be disappointed. You're going to get the cuisine and the spices and the decor and the feeling that you would expect when visiting Fort Worth. Okay, the name alone cracks me up. Rodeo Goat. Says it all. What kind of place is this? <laughs> it's just this great hangout place okay. with really unusual burgers. I mean, there's some burgers with some blackberry compote on it and some with um, fried egg. And mm, they're, mm -hmm. yeah, and you know, herb goat cheese and just all sorts of stuff. So what do you normally get there? What's your favorite burger? My favorite burger is probably the whiskey cheddar burger. And it's the one that has the blackberry compote mm -hmm. and candied bacon <laughs> and uh, whole grain mustard. And it's just, it's good. All right. I'll be but, back in an hour. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right, right, right. What but, do you, go ahead. I've recently just gone back and I tried the cheese cheddar fry, the cheese fry surprise. I'd never had them before. What's the surprise? Their brisket chili. Oh. oh. And melted cheese and bacon, and it comes out on a pie tin that's, you know, huge. And there were <laughs> there were three of us, and we didn't put a dent in them hardly. Wow. And we tried. I tried really you hard. Tried. We attempted. <laughs> we tried to get the shirt that said we ate it all. Yeah. Gotcha. And they were so good. All right. So this is one that you like to you like to go out to. How often would you say do you go there? Well, if I lived closer to it, I'd probably go once a week. Really? Yeah. You like it that oh, much? Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. I do go there once a week. Well, thank Me you. Me and my family. Yeah. Okay. So talk a little bit about when do you guys usually go? On the weekend, usually on a Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon. Okay. Um, we usually end up at, uh, there's another place, we go to Fuzzy's Tacos for breakfast, <laughs> and then Rodeo Goats either, it, it, you know, it's lunch or dinner, but yeah, I like the Philip Murren. I know Cowboy Murren, I know the Murren family, so I, it's just out of loyalty. And this is, you said, you, the kids, every, this is a family-friendly yeah. place, oh, right? Yeah. If you've ever been to the Fort Worth Rodeo, it actually looks a lot like that when you walk in with cinder the cement blocks, floor. Yeah, yeah the yeah. cinder block, it's cinder even block, curved, like if you're sitting watching the rodeo oh, really? in the bullpen, which mm -hmm. is where the kids have a little activity there. and. It was definitely a place that people were having good conversation and good food. Um, I have to tell you a tip, though. One of the best things to get, if you ask the waitress, she told me to get the habanero uh, cheddar burger. It was actually called the hot bastard, and it was very spicy, <laughs> yes. But she said to sub it with a turkey patty, and it was really good, and Ooh. then it wasn't so heavy. So it was a really good insider tip that was a really good that. burger. That's yeah. great. Now, is there That's anything great. besides burgers, or is it all? No, they have some salads. Oh, the salads are salads. great. I couldn't, tell are, you what, I couldn't tell you if they're any good or not. <laughs> there's no surprise in them, maybe. I don't know. There is. There is a brisket salad, and for sure. Oh. <laughs> and they've got a huge beer selection mm, and okay. wine. If you're in the so. I'm, uh, yeah. <laughs> on, on Saturday and Sunday, you can get $2 mimosas or $4 moon mosas, which I'd never heard What's of. What's a moon mosa? <laughs> well, let me tell you. It's champagne and moonshine vodka and frozen tang. <laughs> Remember Tang? Yes, wow. the astronauts. That's crazy. And it or something. What a really <laughs> bad idea. But it's bad. <laughs> 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 I am trying that. But apparently it's good. No, so I'm that just saying. Like I'm good. just saying. This is next weekend with the family. Sarcastic. You get yeah. to try it. <laughs> Tell us. Come here, buddy. You're going to love this. <laughs> off you go. <laughs> uh, all right. So any is there any downside to this restaurant? Is it... If you go on Saturday night or Friday night, the parking can be mm -hmm. a problem. So it's a hot spot on the weekend sure. nights. It's yeah. not just lunch yeah. or brunch. It's a hot spot at Saturday mm -hmm. lunch. Yeah, too. Saturday yeah. lunch. Okay. We got there early, okay. and before we left, it was packed. Yeah. My husband's comment was it was one of the places that he would drive from Dallas to Fort Worth to have again for a burger. So I think that's a pretty big yeah, plus. Wow. That, <laughs> I mean, that, that says something yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So let's rate this one. Okay, let's start with you. I mean, that says a lot right there. One to five. What well, do you definitely think? I'm not a burger person, but I actually would give it a solid five. It was really good. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that they could make substitutions. They didn't even question it. And you could do the turkey patty with it. So definitely a five in my book. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm there too. Yeah. I can't go there that often and not call it a fiver. Uh, it's all way. And the real. family loves it. Yeah. And it's just, it's fun. It's, it's casual, but it's not like, it doesn't, you don't feel like you're, yeah. you know, 
<laughs> overpaying for anything or underpaying. Good. It, it's good value. Good value for the for what you get, it sounds like. Five. 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 <laughs> this was a five all around. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thanks for recommending Anytime. it. Anytime. <laughs> all right. When we come back, our restaurant expert, Kyle Noonan, and I will recap the three restaurants we discussed this week and tell you about next week's visit. Stay with us. If you're looking for a truly unique entertainment experience, look no further than Bowl and Barrel, Dallas' only modern American restaurant and tavern complete with 15 state-of-the-art bowling lanes. Whether it's a casual date, a private party, or a corporate event, Bowl and Barrel is a great way to spend an afternoon or evening and the place everyone will be talking about the next day. Great food, great drinks, and great bowling. What are you waiting for? Let's roll. Bowl and Barrel, 8084 Park Lane, Dallas. All right, Kyle. Three great restaurants once again. Mexican food, of course, with Mia's. It's Texas. Uh, of course, we did some seafood again with Pacific Table. And then Rodeo Goat, which, crazy name. Best burgers, though. They all gave it a five. You know, and the name is one of those things that makes you just think about, what is this place? And I've got to go right. there, right? right? And our reviewers all gave it, I think they it scored the highest, five. right? And, you know, Karen probably gave the best compliment. She said, her husband said, I would drive from Dallas to Fort Worth just to get this burger. There's a million burger something. places. Yeah, that does. That so excellent. Especially, there. and people love to cook burgers at home too. And it, when you can go out and you can really say, you know what, I'm, I love cooking burgers at home, but I can't right. make it like that, that matters. One thing I did notice is when we were talking about uh, Pacific Table, mm -hmm. uh, a couple people mentioned that they were out of things. Yes. You know, and I think sometimes consumers get discouraged by that or it's a turn off, but I'm going to tell you, being in the seafood business, mm -hmm. you should never trust a seafood restaurant that doesn't run out of seafood. Well, that's, that's kind of a, a rule of thumb. Like that, that tells yeah. you it's fresh. <laughs> you know, um, if they sure. if they always have the same things and they never run out, be suspect of it. So so that's kudos good, that's to them. That's good to and, know. Yeah. yeah, because someone who doesn't know that would go, oh, they're they're right. It made their rankings go down a little bit. Right. You, you can't know? always catch the same fish. You know, sure. so so if it runs out, that's not always a bad thing. That's usually a good sign. Excellent. And of course, me, as we talked about the margaritas. Institution. You can't go wrong with that. I mean, margaritas. that's really probably where the uh, Tex-Mex craze mm -hmm. in Dallas and, and the, the appetite that we all have in DFW mm -hmm. for Tex-Mex, that's probably where it started was yeah. Mia. So institution, you can't go wrong with that. Um, Excellent. I mean, fajitas and margaritas. You can't go wrong. That's right. Throw some bacon in there. That's all we Indeed. need. <laughs> all right, next week on Local Fair, we visit three more Dallas Fort Worth hotspots, all suggested and reviewed by viewers just like you. And if you would like to be a guest on Local Fair, visit our website at localfairdfw.com and click on Be a Guest Reviewer. That's all for this week. Thank you for joining us and get out and enjoy the Local Fair. We'll see you next week.